Hello everyone, my name is Ian and you're watching Big Rock Moto. Thank you so much for tuning in today. If you're new here and you like this kind of content, I hope you'll consider subscribing. So what is the plan for today's video? It's really simple. We're gonna take my Touareg 660 out on the highway, the freeway, the interstate for some high speed, longer distance testing. So I've got a test loop planned out of around between 200, maybe 250 miles. I've got about four or five hours to do it, so I'm gonna have to keep moving. And it's gonna involve a lot of higher speed, 75, 80, 85, miles per hour. I'll put the kilometers power below, of course, like I always do, to see how this thing is for long distance comfort and some higher speed road riding. So we're all going to be on the street today, no off road. So uh, we're going to talk about fuel economy, comfort, wind protection, uh, the seat comfort, some of the features of the bike, the how the engine is at higher speeds, touring, things like that. So let me flip this around and kind of give you a quick, just a quick walk around of the bike in its current state, and then we'll jump on and we'll go for a ride. All right, quick walk around of the Touareg 660. So if you watched my last video, video episode five, I went to the dealer, installed some accessories, did the break-in service, did some things like that. So we got the skid plate on there, SW Motec, skid plate, SW Motec crash bars. Really happy with how these turned out. Thank you, SW Motec, for sending those out for testing. Uh, I've got my Pewish wind visor, which helps reduce the buffeting, quiets it down, especially when I'm, you know, have the microphone and the helmet, it helps with that. I've got Barkbuster handguards, flex bars, OEM Aprilia heated grips, we'll test those out today. I've got the OEM quick shifter now installed, uh, which I'll be riding for the first time. Black dog foot pegs, I've got the factory seat, I've got SW Motec luggage racks on right now. They're quick release luggage racks, so if you want to use rackless luggage or you want to take the racks off, uh, these quick turn fasteners. I've got a whole video coming up on this luggage system along with these Sysbag WP uh, Pro uh, waterproof removable soft luggage, which are really, really cool. And the quick release racks have a whole video separate coming up on that to review that soon. They sent these out for me to test. I've also got some other luggage I'll be testing on the bike. Um, besides that, yeah, double take mirrors. Got my camera here. I'm trying out the Giant Loop handlebar bag. Um, I bought this and just to get away from maybe the tank bags. The tank bags kind of always get in my way. They're just a little bit frustrating. So I'm trying to get over to using handlebar bags instead. So yeah, we're good to go. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get my helmet on here, get riding. Uh, we'll fuel up. We'll get some high speed interstate underneath us, and we'll see how this bike performs. I'm on my way down to the uh, freeway to get on a high-speed testing uh, part of this part of this uh, day, and um, oh, it's very windy. You can probably hear the wind. It's a very windy area of California, one of the windiest actually. Anyway, a few observations I have already. So it's been a it's been a minute since I've ridden this bike, and I've actually uh, had quite a bit of changes done to it. So uh, let's start off with the heated grips. Uh, get that out of the way. The heated grips are uh, the way they perform. They don't heat that much. I'm a little bit underwhelmed a little bit disappointed with that so if I go here I've got level one two and three and level one I've tested it I can almost barely feel the heat and I'm wearing a non insulated leather Gore-Tex glove so these 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 are not even a thick glove I should be able to feel the heat on number two I can feel it it's mild heat and number three is like just a little bit above mild heat it's not very hot it's adequate it's gonna do what I need to do and keep my hands warm but it feels like it's missing about two steps higher than, than it has. It feels like it should have four and five. It just doesn't seem like they get warm enough, but I like how they integrate into the dashboard and they look good and you know, it's a nice clean installation there. So I'm okay with it, but I mean, it was 400 bucks between labor and parts to get those put on. So you pay 400 bucks and they still don't work that well. That's a little bit disappointing. I've had heated grips that are way warmer than this on other bikes. Uh, the next thing is good news, the quick shifter. So let me show you here. Hopefully you can hear it over this darn wind. Oh, there we go, hello. Jeez. So the quick shifter is like butter. I'm really happy with the quick shifter. It's so smooth, it's seamless. Uh, you don't feel any clunkiness when you use the gear shifter. There's the downshifts there. Oh, I love it. Feels like a race bike. It just blips so well. You know, I was a little bit worried because uh, 
a few people had said that they were a little disappointed in the action of the quick shifter on some of these Aprilias, but I'm finding the opposite. This thing works amazing. It's one of the best quick shifters I've used. So the next thing is the uh, fuel mapping. So when Aprilia uh, put these bikes out there, uh, a lot of people, and if you research this bike, you kind of know this, they had a little bit of a fueling stumble around three or 4,000 RPM. Sometimes it would kind of cut out and uh, the power felt a little bit dead below about 4,000 RPM sometimes, just a little inconsistent. So they updated that uh, and I'm happy to report that the new fueling is great. Like it's, the bike not only feels a little bit more powerful and responsive, but there's no more hiccup uh, at that three, 4,000 RPM range. So that's all fixed. I'm very happy that Aprilia did that free of charge. So real world application here. One thing, when you get gas on the Touareg, the fuel cap comes off and then you have to find a place to put it. Why doesn't it just have like a flip up like most bikes do? Kind of annoying, but that's just the way it is. So we're gonna get this thing fueled up and then uh, get on the highway. So it's so windy right now. The wind buffeting is just horrible. I've got like a 40 mile an hour wind in my face. So my effective airspeed right now is over 100 miles an hour with the winds and I'm just getting blasted by buffeting. So it's really making it difficult to film. I'm probably gonna have to get this segment later. Uh, but if this audio is coming through, I mean, the bike is totally fine doing this. It's not getting blown around too much. It's big enough, heavy enough. At 80 miles an hour, let's see, 85 miles an hour. The uh, engine, there's no vibration at all. The engine's totally smooth. The bike feels good. You're at 6,000 RPM at 80 miles an hour to give you a sense of the, of the RPM on the engine. And uh, you've got cruise control. I mean, it's not as good as like a big 1200 GS or something like that, but it's not supposed to be, right? It's a smaller, lighter bike, but it does just fine. And I would really have no issues riding this across country. I might play with some different windshields maybe or get a more comfortable seat, but in terms of the motorcycle itself, it'd be just fine as a touring bike. So I haven't touched the throttle for like 10 minutes. Why? Because this bike has cruise control. I love cruise control. I use it all the time. Uh, it's just kind of a deal breaker for me anymore if a bike doesn't have cruise control. And it's one of the things that I always complained about with the Tenere 700. You know, why wouldn't they put cruise control on that? I think it's a big safety feature. It reduces fatigue on long trips. It allows you to maintain a constant speed, which can reduce speeding tickets and improve fuel economy. And it just allows you to rest your, your right arm for, for long periods. Uh, I just love it. So now we're a little bit out of the wind. It's not quite as bad here. Let me, these cars are stacking up a little bit, reduce my speed here with the cruise control button. So now the wind's a little bit less. I can kind of give a little bit more of a, of a narration here without the horrible wind noise. So this bike on the highway, um, I would say, I mean, it's what you expect of a mid-size Avenger bike, right? It's not quite as relaxed feeling or quite as good a wind protection as a Tiger 1200, an R250 GS, a Super Tenere, or a Multistrada V4 or anything like that. But of course it's not. It's, you know, it's a smaller bike, obviously. Um, but it still does really, really well. And even when I'm cranking it at 80 or 85 miles an hour, or 77 miles an hour as I am right now, it's totally fine. It really is. The engine is super smooth. I mentioned that before. There's just no vibration out of this engine. The ergonomics are really good. And it's a bike you can ride all day long. There's really no issue with this. Um, some of that trade-off of that, of that, a little bit of that longer distance comfort or just sort of feeling of stability of some of the bigger bikes, you're gaining that back, you know, in town with a smaller bike, off-road with a smaller, more agile, better handling bike. So yeah, 
everything's always the trade-off but as an overall package as a bike that can do everything this thing is really pretty unbeatable it's really a great machine for doing everything you know all right as we work our way south through the Coachella Valley here of Southern California a couple more observations I have one is the fuel economy the fuel economy on the Touareg has never been as good as I thought it would be. You know, for a smaller engine, a 660 engine, I thought I'd be getting 50 to 60 miles per gallon US. I get around 45. So, you know, on this trip, it's saying I've got 44.5 miles a gallon, but I have been going pretty fast, you know, between 70 to 80 miles per hour. And I do have the panniers on, which stick out and add some wind drag. So. There is that, but in the time I've owned the bike, I have noticed that the fuel economy is not as good as you would expect. It's more similar to my 1250GS with the bigger engine than it is to most other mid-sized motorcycles that I've, that I've tested, whether it's a Tenere 700 or a KTM 890 or bikes like those. So that's something to note. The tank is uh, 4.8 gallons, so, you know, you still have around a 200 mile range uh, just depending on how fast you're riding. The other thing that I noticed as well as we get around this semi here is the engine heat. So, you know, other people have brought this up with this bike. I haven't noticed it too much, but I've been testing it mostly in the winter. It's a little bit warmer down here in the desert where I am now. It's uh, almost 75 degrees today down here because I'm at low elevation. And I do notice my right leg is pretty hot. I am wearing a, fu uh, a fully uh, a waterproof riding pant um, with a, like a waterproof layer. Uh, so, you know, but I'm, I'm still noticing that my, my leg is getting pretty warm, especially when I'm like sitting at a stoplight. So engine heat, you know, as we get into the warmer months here in the next few months and get into the summer, that's going to be something to watch for. Uh, nothing else really new to report. The bike loves to cruise along at about 70 miles per hour at just over 5,000 RPM. Seems really comfortable doing that. I'm starting to feel the seat a little bit. I've been riding for maybe one to two hours now and I can start to feel the seat. It's not horrible, but it's not great. All right, so let's fuel up and verify our fuel economy. We have gone, let's see how many miles have we done here? 70. 77.2 miles since we last filled up so let's see and the computer well we'll check it in a second here 1.644 gallons 77.2 miles divided by 1.644 actually no we're doing better than we thought 46 96.95 so that's 47 miles a gallon the computer said that we got 44.2 so the computer is pessimistic we got better mileage than that so 47 is more like what i would expect so i guess it does a little bit better than a computer says i'm gonna go in and have a i'm gonna stop here for a minute have a snack and a drink and then uh, keep going Do zero to 100 to zero testing. So, you know, with the knobby tires, you know, it slows things down a bit. It's a bit rougher. It'd be a lot faster with uh, lighter weight, you know, street tires, but still pretty good. And the brakes are very confidence inspiring. The bike's not super fast. I mean, it's 80 horsepower, but it's plenty to keep things exciting. It sounds great. The engine is smooth. It's fun to ride. And it's, you know, the acceleration is great. Uh, it's just not, you know, it's not a super bike. I mean, 80 horsepower is what it is. It's uh, plenty and uh, plenty to get go to jail if you want to you know if you're not careful so let's get on with the test all right we are on one of the best twisty roads in southern california highway s22 outside of borrego springs 
and we are going to feed her the onions, give her the beans. Keeping in mind, of course, that we're on basically dirt tires, so we're not going to get too crazy. Yeah, boy. Quick shifter makes the downshift super smooth. Take a set into the corner. Give it the beans. Oh, I love the quick shifter. bit of gravel there that's fun it's nice to have traction control as a safety net and this bike does have that bang it down in a second I'm telling you, that quick shifter, that's the best thing I've done to this bike since I bought it. That is like a huge improvement. Got rocks on the road. My approach to doing cornering on the road is usually come in a little bit slower than you, than you might think you can and then uh, just err on the side of caution, you know. You can always go fast on the exit once you can see, once you have a sight line to see up ahead. <laughs> well, this bike doesn't disappoint on the road like this. It's only really limited by its uh, tires that are on it, which are the knobby tires. Other than that, it's really just, you know, how good of a rider are you? That would be the only limit. It's not a super bike or a sport bike, but sure does really, really well. I think I'm going to uh, shut the cameras off and try to enjoy the rest of this road without the pressure of filming, because this is one of the best darn motorcycle roads you'll ever find anywhere in the world, probably. getting closer to home now a beautiful time of day a beautiful light it's starting to get a little bit chilly and I have to watch out for deer this time of day they love to get active towards dusk uh, a couple things uh, these heated grips yeah they're pretty disappointing uh, it, it sucks that you pay $400 for something that doesn't really work that well the left grip is okay it's pretty warm on maximum setting the right grip, the throttle grip, is just lukewarm on max setting. It's better than not having any heated grips at all. I mean, it's keeping my hands from just freezing with these non-insulated gloves. And it's, you know, 45, 50 degrees uh, here. Um, so it's, I'm glad I have them, but uh, it's a little bit disappointing. Besides that, actually, my butt is not hurting very much. I've been riding for over four hours now. And surprisingly the seat is is not is, you know it's hanging in there pretty good it's really not bad it's above average i would say so yeah this bike is proving so far to be pretty good as a highway cruiser it's never going to be a gold wing but for a mid-sized adventure bike i don't think you could really ask for too much more maybe a little less wind buffeting maybe you know, maybe a little taller six gear would be nice, but these are nitpicks for sure.
Ooh, it got a little bit cold there towards the end of that ride. Got a little bit of a chill, so I went and made some tea, got out of my riding gear. So just kind of wrapping up this, uh, this you know, on-highway review of the Touareg 660, I don't have any major concerns or major complaints. So if you're considering buying one of these bikes, but you need to do some highway touring, some higher speed riding, I think you're probably going to be fine. Part of it depends, of course, on what you're used to. If you're used to a Goldwing or a 1200 GS, yeah, it might seem a little bit busy. The engine is wound up a little bit higher, especially above 80 miles an hour. There's some wind buffeting, especially with the stock windshield. Even with the visor that I have, there's still some wind buffeting, but it's not terrible. Overall, for an adventure bike, especially a mid-size adventure bike, I think Aprilia kind of thought of everything. I mean, you've got the cruise control, now I've got the quick shifter and integrated heated grips, even though they're not that warm. Um, smooth running engine, everything is just, everything just works together. It's like they thought of everything when they designed this bike. I rode four to five hours today and you know what, my butt is not even sore. I mean, it was, I was getting a little bit, you know, moving around a little bit towards the last hour of the ride, but no worse than I would be on almost any other motorcycle, including touring or sport touring motorcycles. So the factory seat seems to have pretty good foam. Aprilia does sell a comfort seat that might be something I might look into. It's only a couple hundred bucks, it might be worth trying. And it's black instead of the yellow. The yellow is a little bit much maybe on the seat and I think it's gonna get dirty over time. Thank you so much for watching this. If you have questions, comments, concerns, put those down below and I'll make sure to follow up with you. And again, this is just part of a multi-part series on this bike. So if you've missed some of the episodes, I'll link those other ones below in case you wanna go back and kind of get caught up and watch all the episodes in this series. And speaking of that, stay tuned for more content with this bike. I'm not gonna be selling this bike anytime soon. I have some trips planned for it, some definite you know, adventure rides, multi-day adventure rides planned with it. And it's really exceeding my expectations in almost every single aspect. And it's really hard to think of a better mid-size adventure bike for the way I like to ride. So very, very happy with it. Thanks again for watching. Please support Big Rock Moto. There's ways to do that in the description below. Other than that, ride safe, and I'll see you out there.